Every time I see relationship advice out there like text this to keep him happy or say this to make her fall in love, I get annoyed. Instead of trying to gaslight and manipulate your partner into short-term obsession, it's much more productive to try and understand what is happening and then practice strategies to learn and grow. What if I told you that it's okay if your partner gets mad at you, that it's okay to have doubts and feel insecure, and that none of these have to mean the end? It's time to challenge these misconceptions and talk about how to actually build a fulfilling, meaningful partnership. Diving right in with the first false fact. With the right partner, the relationship will go smoothly. I'm sure you've been with people and every conversation was a struggle. Or you listen to your friends talk about their relationships and think to yourself, it's not supposed to be this hard. The truth is, relationships are hard, so let's talk about them. You and your partner come with baggage. Both of you bring childhood triggers into your relationship. Normalize that your communication patterns, your behaviors, and your emotions are based on what worked for you as a kid, but probably doesn't work anymore. When things get tough and uncomfortable, children only have access to a very limited range of reactions, mostly externalizing behaviors like screaming or lashing out, or internalizing like withdrawing into themselves and avoiding everyone. These patterns continue, and as an adult, if your partner, for example, cancels a dinner date, you might spiral out into being convinced they don't love you anymore, and then stop talking to them when they come home and just say, fine, when they ask you how you are. To the point where psychologists would call it emotional dysregulation. Emotional dysregulation is when your nervous system has a huge reaction to a relatively small situation. You can't calm down and you either start throwing things or completely distract yourself so you don't have to feel the panic from that dysregulation. The good news is, as an adult, you now have access to higher cognitive reasoning, something that wasn't available to you as a child. We all have our coping mechanisms to try and avoid uncomfortable feelings, but in an adult, smart, romantic relationship, you are empowered to practice getting curious about what's really going on and have an open, vulnerable conversation with your partner. If cancelling the dinner sent a message to your brain that made you remember how abandoned you felt when your parents didn't show up for you, that is something that as an adult you are able to figure out. Very often simply verbalizing it also shifts the energy around it and gives you back more breathing room to get back to center. You might even tell your partner, hey, I was looking forward to that dinner, you cancelling it last minute triggered something that made me feel small and unloved, please bring back some takeout on your way home and then I'd like to connect with you tonight to understand what happened. Sounds awkward? It is. We don't usually say stuff like that, because in the right relationship, your right partner can read your mind, right? Well, your emotions are happening inside of your nervous system, so you get to manage them. Learning to do that in the company of a life partner whom you can trust is actually a great way to heal those childhood wounds. So, normalize the concept that individuals bring stuff into relationships that will work themselves out over time. Normalize the idea of exploring childhood experiences and supporting each other through learning to regulate emotions in new ways as adults. When you build your relationship around learning about yourself and one another, personal growth becomes a daily practice. This takes us to the next myth. The right relationship will make you feel happy ever after. I want to make two points here. A, normalize that nobody is happy all the time. And B, normalize that it's not your partner's job to make you happy. According to the Psychology Dictionary, happiness is an emotion of joy, gladness, satisfaction, and well-being. All day, everyday happiness doesn't happen in marriage, in relationships, or at work, or in life. If you felt happy all the time, you wouldn't be able to appreciate it because you need the counterbalance of sad, angry, or unhappy to recognize when you are happy. As humans, we have a range of emotions for a purpose. We need to experience the full spectrum because every emotion is giving your body important feedback about what is happening in your surroundings and what you need to stay alive. Emotion is energy in motion. All feelings are valid and serve a purpose, and as an adult, you get to question them and learn to manage them. Most often, feeling unhappy with your partner doesn't mean they did anything wrong. Why? Because they are not responsible for your emotions, just like you are not responsible for their emotions. So if your partner gets mad at you, maybe it's not because you did something, but because you triggered something in them. This is where you get to return the favor and hold space for them as they learn to regulate their emotions with you. To make this work, ensure that you don't have difficult conversations on an empty stomach or when one or both of you are tired from work. Finally, another myth is that in the right relationship, you'll always feel secure and there won't be any doubt. I say normalize having doubts and feeling insecure. The important thing to remember is doubts are thoughts and thoughts come and go. The more you dwell on them, the more evidence you will find to be doubtful. If you're feeling yourself going down that rabbit hole, make a conscious effort to also pay attention to all the things big and small that are going well in your relationship. This is also where you want to be very self-aware of your own role in feeding this doubt. For every time he leaves the toilet seat up, she leaves her hair in the sink. 
you know? So pay attention to all the things that you do that might signal you're unavailable or disconnected. And again, normalize open and honest communication as a regular practice. Establish a safe and non-judgmental space for open dialogue and encourage discussions about feelings, needs, and concerns. Maybe even consult a professional as a neutral third party to help get you started with the right mindset. Then you can practice the right communication techniques, like active listening, and it will strengthen the bond of trust and vulnerability between you. But yes, not everything has to be said out loud, so normalize providing emotional support to one another as well, actively create a culture of compassion, understanding and empathy, and normalize expressing emotions and seeking comfort and reassurance from one another during challenging times. Hugging works great here, and also kissing. Lots of non-sexual physical touch, basically, is usually very comforting. So there are lots more outdated relationship tips out there and we can't cover them all in one video, but I hope this one gave you a good overview of the advantages of sitting with discomfort and learning to manage any unpleasant emotions. Most importantly, don't beat yourself up over how you've been handling things so far. It takes time to realize that most of our behavior and emotional reactions are actually patterns that we've been doing for years. The point is, they used to keep us safe and they used to work for us to get what we wanted and what we needed as children. They just need to be updated now that we are adults. So learning new ways to communicate with your partner is going to take time and I'm here to also say let's normalize that there will be setbacks and you will make new mistakes. But that's all part of learning to love yourself and each other. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and please check out this next video as well. I'll see you there.